about the last thing you want before you start YouTubing is to have something in your teeth. Hi, I'm Wendy Valencia. My husband Mauricio, my daughter Melina, and I are on baby step two of the Dave Ramsey plan, and we are paying off more than $300,000 worth of debt. Today I'm going to be talking about what percent of our income we are living on. Last week I got this amazing message from someone who I'm assuming is pronounced Chris. And it read, this will be one of Dave Ramsey's, can you live on 50K and pay debt with 100K? The biggest expense in areas like Metro DC is real estate services and keeping up with the Joneses. I wouldn't be stressing over the food budget, keep it under 100K, coffee and wine included. As long as you cook at home for most days, don't eat steak and sushi every week, eat more veggies, they're better for you anyway. There's nothing wrong with rice and beans once a week as long as they are cooked well. So I thought this message was so accurate. In the DC area, real estate to include rent and utilities and all the things that go with owning or renting real estate, those are huge, as well as services. And the big one is keeping up with the Joneses. And I'm gonna do a whole video on that one at some point because Keeping up with the Joneses is a huge problem in this area. One thing that wasn't mentioned that I think is a huge, huge, huge cost in this area is childcare. Childcare is extremely expensive in this area. And that $590 that we put every month towards before and after care. So two hours before school starts and two hours after school starts. So four hours a day, we're paying $590 for that. That is actually through Fairfax County and is significantly cheaper than a lot of other places that do that as a service. So this post really got me thinking. When I first saw it, I knew we were doing pretty well, but I really had never thought like what percentage we were living on, what percentage of our income. And then I thought, well, what do you include in that percentage? Should I include sinking funds in the percentage that we're living on? Should it basically be be everything but what we're putting to debt are our living expenses. So ultimately I decided everything that wasn't going to debt was gonna be what I considered living expenses because that did include sinking funds because you know what? Sinking funds are a necessary part of life, at least in my life from this point forward they will always be a necessary part. So I went back over about a year's worth of budgets and I started doing some math. And truthfully, it's quite variable for us. Some months it's as low as 33% we're living on. Some months it's 45. And in months where we cash flow major expenses, it can be as high as 60%. Those months would be like, for example, in September when we cash flowed like what was it, $1,400 worth of dental expenses? Or in December, when I hit that $800 pothole, or, and there was a lot going on last December. I did an average over the year, and our average is about 45% that we are living on. That means we're putting about 55% of our income every month to debt. And legitimately, some people look at our budget every month and our income and are like, why can't you just cut it down to the absolute bare minimum, cut it and go? I mean, seriously. But there are some things in our budget that we absolutely couldn't cut. Some of those things are our $270 for a storage unit because that's where all our stuff is and I'm not getting rid of it. $590 for before and after care because I'm not going to make my parents take care of my child every day. That's just too much to ask. $260 a month for food, because we got to eat. And FYI, that only includes our breakfast and our lunches, really. Haircuts for Mauricio. His hair is still going to grow even on this plan, so I can't have a hippie-looking husband. Well, yes, I could, but no. Gas. We gotta pay for gas. That's that we put a hundred dollars a month to that. Three hundred dollars a month for various insurances, rental insurance, life insurance for me, life insurance for Mauricio, car insurance, and then the pretty much three hundred dollars a month that goes to medical every month. That's eighteen hundred and forty-five dollars in monthly expenses that we can't cut. I mean, no stinking way could we cut any of those. And notice. I didn't include my cell phone in that list. Ain't no way I'm cutting my cell phone. 
but it's not a necessity. It is a luxury. But for example, this month we have more or less $5,000 in actual expenses. So what's the big discrepancy between $1,845 and $5,000? Sinking funds. We put $725 to sinking funds every month. That $190 goes to my cell phone that I'm never going to cut. $70 to the local toll road system. $200 for new summer clothes for Melina. $200 of blow money every month, $100 to Amazon, and our $100 cushion. All of these things add up. Are they absolute necessities? No, but they are things that we're not gonna cut out of our lives for whatever reason. Some of the things are really important to us and some of the things are there because we know if we cut too much, we start to go a little crazy and start spending money we don't have. But really, I don't think any of our expenses are unreasonable. We aren't taking vacations. We're not out shopping all the time. We almost never go out to dinner. But there is fluff in our budget, and I, I freely admit that. And we've chosen to keep the fluff in our budget for a reason, because it keeps us sane. However, six months from now, when we're out, you're going to see a big change because we're not gonna have the freedom to have the fluff and still make our financial goals because our goals are going to go from $7,000 a month, six or $7,000 a month to maybe 3,000 a month. Yeah, it's gonna be a big change. You'll see big rent payments and zero fluff, but only time will tell. So I'll see you in the next one. See ya, we're out.